this morning. We're living, we're living a bad. Well, we have about 14, 14 vehicles out there this morning, I think. That's pretty good. Y'all ready? Terry, are you ready? You wait. Wait on Paul. Wait on Paul. Paul, you ready? Paul said you wait on him to back it up.
it's y'all's turn. Y'all didn't know that was coming, did you? Would you stand and remove cover and join in the singing of the national anthem with us? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the Amen. It's a blessing to be here. Amen. Amen. 
hey, this is this is round two for me. I'm always ready to roll by this time. We've been doing two services and uh, <clears throat> really uh, kind of serving a purpose too because uh, some of the people that may have some health conditions or maybe our senior citizens, they've been coming to the drive-in service. We had a good crowd this morning. The weather was good. So uh, welcome to round two today. Amen. We're going to go through some announcements, and uh, of course we know today or tomorrow is Memorial Day, and be sure and we want to appreciate it. I saw something that a friend of mine put on Facebook the other day. It said, don't forget why you're able to have that cookout. <laughs> Can I get a good amen? And what that means is the reason we're able to do things for this weekend, never lose sight of why, it's because of those that give their life. Uh, to fight for our freedom. And I'm thankful we li we do live in a, a free country. Can I get a good amen? amen? And hey, we're still fighting for that freedom, but we are a free country and it's based on godly principles. And if it were not for that, we wouldn't even be here today. So I'm thankful for those that uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice. And you think about the, the moms, it's like that song we was singing there, and people that, that laid down their lives that lost uh, friends and family members and loved ones. So let's just remember uh, why we have Memorial Day. Let's pray for those. A lot of people are on the road. I notice a lot of people are traveling today and out of town. And, and so let's pray for those that, that are <clears throat> going to be traveling. Uh, some quick announcements. Our men's prayer breakfast is back rolling on Mondays at 6. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Tracy said we would not do that uh, in the morning, is that right, Mr. Marvin? Because of the the holiday, the world day since it's a holiday, but it'll pick back up next Monday. Uh, where is Tracy? Is Tracy in the Florida? Hey, before you leave, uh, catch me. Uh, I got a, a favor to ask of you. All right, good deal. That kind of puts him on the spot. So you know, I mean, he's got to do it now. <laughs> I may just tell him what I need in front of everybody. He'll be like, "Oh man, I got to do it now." But. Uh, Men's prayer breakfast will pick up next Monday. Uh, communication cards in the seats in front of you. Some yellow communication cards. It's our way of communicating with you as a church staff. If you have a need or if you want to become a member, be water baptized, thank God we're finally getting back into the swing of things so we can do some water baptism, anything that we need, and get everybody lined out. We've been through some crazy times, but God never changes. Amen? And uh, I'm thankful that He's with us. And, you know, whatever we face, the world, we don't even really know what tomorrow holds. And, you know, in, in life in general, but we know who holds tomorrow. Amen? Amen. And God is faithful. And I'm just glad that we're getting back and, <clears throat> and getting some things going again. we got some exciting announcements here in just a moment. But if you have a prayer request or anything that you need to communicate with us, fill out that yellow card, drop it into the wooden churches, one on each side of the back of the auditorium and one in the foyer. Or uh, if you give, I want to thank our church. I mean, it's just amazing. we got the best church in the world, and I'm very proud of y'all. We're privileged to be y'all's pastors. But we've uh, even in the midst of all this, uh, we've learned a lot. Everybody enjoys, you know, we do a little live feed every couple of days. And that's something that kind of was good. We probably should have been doing before. But uh, we, we were distanced away from one another, but yet we were we were still close. And so I'm thankful for our church. I'm thankful for our committed people. And, and our church has been so good, uh, even in the area of supporting our church through all of this. I mean, I'm just thankful that God's work carries on. So if you do give in the offering or, or Put a, have a communication card, drop it in one of the wooden churches. Uh, the youth are back meeting on Wednesday nights. Tish, anything you need to say about that? It's going, just got started. Uh, we've had two Wednesdays. So uh, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. We're building that back up. You know, we're all creatures to have. Amen? And how many of you know if you uh, stay home and watch church on TV about three or four weeks, sometimes it's easy to just kind of get used to that. So especially the teenagers are... We're, we're getting them back in the schedule. Uh, this coming Saturday will be a team roping school. We have Brett Gould, a uh, three-time national finals qualifier. It lives in Lufkin and is a customer and friend of mine. And so he is going to put on a team roping school this coming Saturday. So we're excited. I don't know about y'all. I don't like that grass growing in the arena. I'm going to do something about that as soon as I can over here. So uh, we're we're excited. Our arena is a cowboy church. Is, is our tool, is our bait, or one of many draws. But uh, we are going to have a roping school. we got six headers and six healers uh, ready to go. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, the weather, uh, we don't know. It looks like it's going to rain a lot this week. 
And so if it's too wet Saturday, we have a backup plan. Thank the Lord for a backup plan. Uh, if the arena is too wet here, what we were gonna, we're gonna invite anybody that wants to come out and watch. Feel free to go on all days. We'll be roping a, a, a dummy or a sled pulled behind a four wheeler that morning. And then we'll rope, they'll rope live cows. So it'll go on pretty much all day. And we, anybody that wants to come watch, please do. This is our plan. If it, if it doesn't rain and the arena's dry enough, we're gonna do it here. Uh, at the church arena. But if it rains like it does say that it may do that, we will go to plan B and go to the covered pen there in Jasper in town. And I'm thankful uh, the the dirt was a challenge, but Mr. Todd said he would, would help. Man, thank you for that. That was, uh, we would be skidding out there and, and uh, having rocks flying. It, it'd be pretty, it's hard, they say, but he's going to work on that. So either way, we will uh, have our open school next Saturday. I'm glad we didn't have to to cancel it due to rain and uh and we're going to share uh the gospel there's going to be several devotions a couple two to three throughout the day uh little devotions it's a small group of people so you get to uh, get to build some friendships with people so we are looking forward to that uh we have a praise report this morning i'm going to ask miss uh Joyce to come up here if you would she uh came to me and said would you mind if i give get this handheld mic going uh Miss Cheryl, could you help me out with that? Uh, she said, do you, I want to give a testimony. I said, well, I, I think that's a good idea. Sometimes the testimony of the power of prayer is good for all of us. So I can't tell her testimony as good as she can, so I'm going to let her do that. She came to me. I said, you, you bet. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. It's good to see everybody here. And anybody that wants a hug that didn't get one this morning, come see me after church. <laughs> I'd be glad to oblige. <laughs> I think for us, for us, for myself, that has been the hardest thing about this disease that we've encountered is not being able to offer that touch that each and every one of us need. Mother's Day weekend, I took my younger sister down to New Orleans. She lives there in Metairie. And uh, on the way, we stopped at my daughter's house. I was going to see my two children for the weekend. My grandson was frying fish, so we needed some tartar sauce. We go down to one store on one side of the house, and they don't have any tartar sauce. Can you imagine a store that don't have tartar sauce? <laughs> so we start down the other way and pass in front of my daughter's house going to another store and before we get to the other store we my granddaughter and I were hit head on in a two car collision you had no time to react just Lord all you can say all you can think it just, it's true, it flashes before you, your eyes, your life, and what's going on. That happened about 6.30 in the evening. By 10.30 at night, my granddaughter and I were back to my daughter's house. We had been investigated with x-rays, CT scans. Everybody went home including the young man that hit us. It is only by God's grace that we were able to go home. There's still some soreness, so when I hug, it's a sacrifice. <laughs> but it's a good sacrifice because we need to love each other, show each other that love by hugging. Yes. But I give God the praise and glory for bringing us through. Amen. Thank you, Christmas, and God. Aren't we glad sometimes, like I say, God looks out for us sometimes and we don't even realize He's doing it. Amen. So that's a good testimony. I want to end our announcements. Don't forget this coming Saturday. I'll get on uh, live on Facebook and remind y'all. But feel free to come out here to school at any point. Uh, I do have a, a prayer request as well. I have a, a, a friend of mine uh, that's been a friend of mine probably 25 years. And he's 
as we speak, is having surgery in Tyler, uh, uh, having some brain surgery, found a couple of tumors, and they had to move quickly. So please uh, lift him up and be in agreement with us that God guides those doctors' hands. Amen. And that God is well able to do that. So I think that is all of our announcements. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn in our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 24. And then I'll open this up with a word of prayer. And then we'll welcome our, our Facebook crew. Uh, such a such a blessing to be in church today. I don't know about y'all, but I'm thankful for air conditioning. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, uh, this morning we preached outside. Somebody said, what are you going to do when it gets hot? I said, well, as long as, long as people that, that don't feel comfortable about coming in, I'm, I'm good with it. I said, it's kind of like a vacation anyway. Because I'm usually shoeing horses. And that means you're folded in halves. And trying to breathe and sweat's running off of you. So uh, summer's not the most favorite time of most fairies. But somebody asked me if I was a hot shoer in August. And I said, everybody in Texas is a hot shoer in August. Amen. <laughs> now, what they were asking is, do you use the Fords? But I don't use the Fords anymore. But anyway, I'm thankful for, the. you know, we need to be thankful for even the little things. Yes, Yesterday I went out and my wife, we had talked and I had a fan that broke and so I ordered a new fan off Amazon and I went out to the to the driveway and I was so happy and she came out and said, what have you been doing? I said, I got my new fan in. So a fan is a blessing to, to us in the summertime, but I even got me a little generator and I set it up out there by my trailer no matter where I'm at and keep some air moving. So it's good to be thankful in our lives all the time. Amen. It's the key to being blessed by God, but it's also good to be thankful, not just for the big things, but the small things. So I'm, I'm thankful for things like look, protection. I'm thankful that God is is uh, watching over my buddy and, and guiding those doctor's hands. And uh, we want to welcome our Facebook Live group. Let's give them a hand clap this morning if you're watching live. They, they've been watching us, whether we be in the parking lot through several, uh, many services out there. I'm so grateful we did that and kept our church kind of rolling. Uh, it's going to be easier for us to hit the ground running. I'm excited about things in the future. Our team roping school, uh, the sheep are ready for a mutton busting. All right, they've been kind of hanging out there at the house and, and they're ready for a mutton busting. We're, we're looking forward to getting some things going and, and, uh, and, and, and getting moving. I'm ready to get the, the grass out of the arena. So we want to welcome all of our viewers. And if you're watching, uh, we hope you're blessed today by the service. We're blessed that you're here with us. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Lord, we ask you to speak to our hearts today. May your word penetrate our hearts. And may we leave different than we came. And Lord, if we don't, it would have to be our fault. Because you said we would be doers of the word, not hearers only. So we ask you to soften our hearts. And uh, Lord, may we seize the opportunity to receive your word today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 We're going to talk about something today, titled this little, I don't really title messages, but we're going to talk about keeping our guard up. Let's say it together. Keep our guard up. Remember last week we talked about the full armor of God? Now, why would God give you this full armor? It, it would be kind of silly for us not to put it on. But sometimes we do exactly that. We know about the armor of God, but we don't put it on at all times. So we're, we as Christians, you have to take your call very seriously. Let's say that together. Take our call very seriously. We all have a call on our life. There was a guy who came up to me today before church and said, man, I've got to do, uh, I've got to do something that's, I don't do a lot of, do you have any advice? And is there some scriptures that you could share? And I said, man, yeah. And then he told me what he was going to be doing. And I'm thinking, dang, that's a ministry in itself. And he, he, he's going to be doing something that's very, very, very much a ministry. And you don't think about those things, but we're all called to do different things. Amen? And God can use anybody. And everybody should say amen. I'm going to say it one more time. God can use anybody. Amen. We're all proof of that, right? He uses me and I'm from Beulah, Texas. I mean, come on. <laughs> if God can use somebody from Beulah, He can use anybody. And uh, I remember when I was a little kid, I wouldn't even hardly speak in public. And everybody reminds me that I overcame that. But, you know, God has God can take an ordinary person like you and I. As long as we, what did we talk about Wednesday night if you watch the, the service from off the back porch? Being humble before Christ. Amen. Being humble before the Lord. Realizing that in ourselves we can't do anything, but through Him we can do all things. 
So that means if we submit our life to Him and submit ourselves to Him and realize when He has your back, you and God are a majority. So we want to keep our guard up. It's our responsibility for me to keep my personal guard up. Remember the, 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 the armor of God was the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet shod with the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation that should guard our mind. Remember, we've been talking on Wednesday nights. Our mind is a, is a powerful tool. It can work for us or against us. And there's a huge battlefield and it's in our mind. So the, the, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, we've been made right before God. Not because we were good people and perfect, but because Jesus took our place. That's why he's our hero. So we're going to get rolling here. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. It's our job to keep our, our guard up and, and, and make sure that we protect ourselves and we realize that there is a spiritual battle in the Bible, it's laid out very clearly. There is good and there is evil. And our job is to uh, make sure that we stand firm and be sober and vigilant, the Bible says. Proverbs 24, verse 16. I'm going to read it to you out of the NLT. Man, it's a blessing to be back in here so I can look at some of these scriptures. It says, the godly may trip seven times. How many of you ever tripped before? Amen. Anybody ever tripped and it embarrassed you before? All right, at least we're honest. Let me tell y'all what happened to one of my buddies one time. Now I'm 50 years old now. When I was about 33 to 46 or 8, I traveled with the strip team. And we would go all over the country. And I don't even work out anymore, but we would do feats of strength. And we did that. We would go into public schools and get the privilege to speak to the kids in the school. But we were smart. We put bait out. And we would hand out little brochures that invited them to come out that night. And we would say, you're going to see a guy take a telephone pole and lift it over his head. The guy's going to rip a phone book in half. What were we doing? We were putting bait in the water, right? And so all these school kids would come to the evening program, which was at the church like this. So we would preach the gospel. And everybody would give their own little personal testimony. So one night we were introducing a buddy of mine. And he, he came in the back of the church, boy, that we had the lights on, and we said, this is this is so-and-so. And we said, you know, we always told them how, how, how big, you know, how much they weighed, what they could do this and that. And so we introduced this guy, we say, man, you know, he can do this, he can bend a steel bar in his teeth, and, and, and man, he, he's strong. And he come running in the church, goes up to the stage to wave at everybody, stubs his toe on one of the cement blocks. And so he's running up there, Mr. Muscle Guy, he's a big stout guy, hangs his toe and rolls up like you had shot him with a deer rifle, all right? Bam! Face first on the stage. So he comes in and makes his wonderful debut and, and, and falls on his face. How many of us have done that in life? You're like, I wasn't on the street team, Pastor, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've done the same thing. And we've all, maybe not then, but you know, it was funny. We gave him a hard time about it because he fell down. I said, man, you, you showed your phenomenal phenomenal athleticism today by falling. So we had a good laugh about it. But we've all tripped and fell. A godly man may, may trip seven times, but they will what? Get up again. Because God is on your side, there's only one thing you can't do, and that's fail. The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Aren't you glad that when we have God on our side, we're going to make it? Everybody say that with me. We're going to make it. Now, we may not understand everything, right? Any of you ever been in some things that you didn't understand? Been in a hard time thinking, how in the world am I ever going to get out of this? How many of us have prayed some toilet bowl prayers before? Nobody wants to be honest all this stuff. How many of you ever prayed one of those toilet bowl prayers? Oh God, if you ever get me out of this. And we've all got our little toilet bowl prayers in different ways. You know, we may, <laughs> some, something comes up, you know. And, uh, I have a friend that not too long ago, I mean, he's a good young man and, and doing good and he's, he's serving the Lord, but he got out in a situation that he shouldn't have been in. Anybody ever done that before? Amen. Got in a position he shouldn't have been in 
And before he knew it, he was in a tough position and he went to the old famous prayer. God, if you get me out of this, I'll never do this again. Anybody ever done that? We got three honest people in the room. All right. But the God they make trip seven times, but they will rise again. Uh, New King James says a man uh, uh, may fall seven times, but he will rise again, a godly man. So I want to challenge you today uh, that even though we may trip and stumble and you walk with God, we're going to always rise again when we put our faith in Christ. Amen? First Peter chapter 5. I need a favor, Miss Allison. Would you get me some water, please? I usually bring water up here. My mouth's getting dry. You know what I was talking First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Now, Wednesday night, we use these very same passages of scriptures. We had a different approach on it. If you watch that, we talked about humility. Remember, we, we talked about how God wants us to be humble. And so we're going to use verse 8. But just to refresh your memory from Wednesday night, it says that in verse 5 that God opposes the proud. We talked about two bulls fighting. Remember that? You see two bulls lock up, man. When we had the bucking bull ranch, we'd always had to build uh, alleys with two fences. Because two bulls, once they lock horns, I don't care how good your fence is, it's not going to be good long. Amen. They'll tear it down. And, and so we don't want to get in a, a shoving match with God. It says God resists or opposes the, the proud, but He gives grace. Everybody say grace yes. to the humble. How many of you want God's grace? Amen. Don't I have a pretty wife? <laughs> Thank you, dear. She's always looking out for me. Amen. <laughs> I'm looking out for her, too. Let me tell you all what Miss Allison. Uh, she's on a keto diet here lately. Everybody say amen. Now, let me tell you how temptations can happen. Now, everybody knows, you know, eating healthy can be a challenge. So she gets on this keto diet. And Miss Barbara Barnett made us a zucchini, some zucchini bread today. So she eased over to me and she said, you know, I'm, I'm doing good on my diet, but I'm not going to let that zucchini bread go to waste, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, we've got to take one for the team and, and do what the Lord wants us to do. we got to eat that zucchini bread, right? Anybody in here gained any weight when we was in quarantine? <laughs> Three more, six honest people. We're getting better. We still got a room of liars at this point. We're going to work through this by the end of the service. <laughs> it's, it's easy to put a little weight on in the quarantine there. First Peter chapter 5, though, it says God resists the proud. How many of you ever seen a good football player that has a wicked stiff arm? You're like, dang, I don't want to face that guy. I don't want to try to attack him. <laughs> I see not that this last year there was a football game. It was Derrick Henry for the Tennessee Titans. They were kind of underdogs, went in as a wild card into the playoffs. And bless his heart, Earl Thomas, the second, I believe, was a, was a safety for the Baltimore Ravens and Derrick Henry stiff armed him so hard uh, that he finally just shoved him and finally that Earl Thomas just started running with him. It looked like he was blocking for him. And he said, man, that was that was a wicked stiff arm. He just shoved him in the face and took him with him and went another 15 yards and just gave him a free ride. And I don't want to get in a shoving match with God. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to who? To the humble. And so my job is to keep my guard up and remain humble and say, Lord, help me, because we all need help. Amen? Amen. Now listen to verse 8. It says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy of the devil who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That means that he can't devour everyone, right? So in order for him to devour us, we have to let our guard down. Everybody say that with me. Let our... How many of us have all been guilty of letting our guard down? In many ways. I mean, it could be a hundred different definitions of letting our guard down. Sometimes when I'm working on a horse, I do so many horses, and they're all gentle and, and broke, and I kind of forget. And if, if I'll step up to a colt, sometimes i got to reprogram my brain, because I'll just grab his leg like he's been doing it for 10 or 15 years, and i start trimming his feet. And then i like, oh, I better wake up here. I've got... 
I got to pay attention. I've got a younger horse that's a little nervous or whatever the case may be. So here he says in verse 8 that we're to stay alert and watch out for your great enemy, the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That means that there are those that he can't devour. And every day I have to make sure that I keep my guard up. It's, it's a daily walk with him. It's, and all through the day, I may let my guard down. So we got to make sure that I have my guard up and that I'm not a statistic for Satan and, and to try to deceive me. That brings me to, I did a small devotion on Facebook the other day from the Deer Lease. How many of you seen that? If you wasn't able to see that on Facebook, this is what happened. We went out to the Deer Lease. And uh, put out some corn. Old Toby said he put out some corn this week. Man, the price of price of meat nowadays. Everybody may go go really get serious about some deer hunting this year. So anyway, we put some put some corn in the feeder. We were just riding around. We love to go out to the deer lease. It's quiet, and so we go out. And I've got a couple of different stands, and we go to one. We put some corn in the feeder. And we go over to the other deer stand, and uh, I noticed one of my plexiglass windows was missing. I thought, dang, I wonder what happened. And so, sure enough, I see this big old black buzzard head come out the window. And it looks down and sees me. And it takes off. Ooh. And that big old buzzard. She come out of that stand. And I looked at Allison. And she looked at me. And she said, dang, was that a buzzard? I said, it was. And I said, that's not a good sign. <laughs> it's not going to be good in that deer stand. Because there's a bu buzzard in there. So Allison, being the tough woman she is, she said, Let's go see what's in there. I did. She said, I tell you what, I'm going to wait here in the truck and you go check it out. I'll be right behind you. So I got my wash spray and uh, I knew I'd be washed in the stand. So I sprayed, opened the door and there is buzzard dung everywhere. <laughs> I mean, whoo, buzzard dung. And then there's a big old uh, buzzard egg in the in the floor of my deer stand. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Stinking buzzard egg, and my wife says, "Can I take it home?" <laughs> I said, "What are you going to do with the buzzard egg? I'll put it under her hen and let her sit on." And I said, "What are we going to do with a, a, a baby buzzard? I don't want a baby buzzard, okay?" So anyway, she rethought her situation, and so we got the egg out, and that's when we got on there for just a few minutes and said, "Golly." A buzzard got in my deer stand, and it, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. So what we're going to do is go to that deer stand, rip, pull the carpet out, get the chairs out, take a gallon of bleach, and sanitize that deer stand. It needs some work, and you know when that happened to me, that's why I shared that because it says be sober. Your heaven said the devil goes around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I'm going to read that out of. My old Bible here, my old New King James, I used to use this Bible for years. It says in, in verse 8, just in the New King James, it says, Be sober and be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That means he can't devour everyone. And another definition for the word sober and vigilant is, the word sober is also translated self-control. And the, the word vigilant is also translated to be watchful. How many of you know we need to be watchful? Uh, one translation, this actually says be sober or be vigilant, to be alert, be on guard, one translation says. Now let me give you an illustration that will hopefully help you. Now we know the buzzard got into my deer stand. How did he get into deer stand? Somehow or another, the plexiglass, they either moved it, I don't know, the plexiglass had a crack in it. And apparently they moved that plexiglass somehow and they gained access and made their home in my deer stand. And it's the same way in our life. If we give the devil an inch, he'll take a what? A mile. And so we, it's not your responsibility to take care of me. No, we can pray for one another and encourage one another. But it's each of our individual responsibility to keep my guard up and make sure that I don't to let the devil ease himself into my life. And he's always looking for a person to devour. So he's always working on you and I. And he knows our weaknesses. My question is, do we know our weaknesses? It's important that you know what your weaknesses are. Can I get a good amen? amen. How many of you w would say, ah, Pastor, I have to admit this, but I can be quick to anger. 
<laughs> Our hands are going up so slow. <laughs> what people are doing is they're looking around to see if their neighbor raised their hand and they, uh, he did it, so I'll do it. She did it, so I'll do it. Man, how many of you know things can ha can change quickly in our life? Amen. Amen. And in my line of work, it, ha it can change quickly. And sometimes it's when you deal with a twelve hundred pound horse, you got to make him think you're crazy, and you're not afraid of him if, if that approaches. And some, every now and then, I'll have a horse that's gentle, man, and they'll short out. And boy, I've got to get down to business, and I got to even get out of the way, or I've got to get their attention right quick and let them know, you know, you, we, we might have to straighten up here a little bit. But it can, it can go from me listening to praise music to a horse stepping on my foot on concrete real quick. And you're like, man. So we have to keep our guard up. Everybody has weaknesses. Now, this afternoon, my wife's weakness will be zucchini bread. And I get a good amen. That's actually not a weakness. That's a blessing. Amen. But we all have weaknesses. And now, my wife loves me because she, she's been doing this little keto diet. And I found out that there's a friend that that, ha, that comes to the farmer's market in Lufkin. And a little, behold, I went to, down to this place. They said, you can get sweets there that are keto friendly. They're homemade. And I walk in and I know the guy. He used to go to my church 20 years ago. He said, Pastor Chair. I said, hey, Mr. Jimmy, how you doing? And... So he says, I, I can fix your wife up. So he makes these Reese's peanut butter cups that are they're better than ones you can get at the store. And now my wife, she, she just looked at me yesterday morning and she said, Honey, could you go to the farmer's market? So I went to the farmer's market and I'm her hero. Amen. For another week. Next week, I will get her some more. But we, we have to keep our guard up because it, it is easy. Everybody has weaknesses. Can I get a good amen? amen? Let me give you an illustration when it says be sober, be vigilant. If I ask you on Saturday, if we have the rope in here, and I said, would you work in the concession stand, a little small building out there, would you work in the concession stand? And if you told me yes, you know, I'll work a couple of hours. You, you would probably go in there and say, okay, where's the drinks? Where's this at? I need to know a few little things. I'm cool. I'm just going to chill out. There's not a lot of people here, but I'll supply, you know, if they want water or a, a, a Coke or something, I'll have it for them. You'd probably be relaxed in there, looking out the front of the uh, concession stand, watching the roping school, right? But what if 10 minutes after you went in the concession stand, I said, hey, by the way, keep your eye out. You said, keep your eye out? Why? There's about a six foot rattlesnake somewhere in this room. <laughs> How many of you know all of a sudden I just lost my concession here? <laughs> you say, all right, I'm fixing to make a new door, the shortest rat out of here. But all of a sudden, if I said there's a rattlesnake in here, how many of you know it's a new ball game? I don't know about you, but I'm a, I'm, I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm scared of snakes, all right? There's a difference. I'm, I'm scared of a snake. I don't like them too much. I don't want to hang around them. I see people with them around their neck. God bless you for that, but don't bring him over to me because we could all get hurt. Amen. <laughs> One time I had a customer come out with a snake. I said, look, man, hey, I'm just telling you right now, don't bring that snake over here and try to put him on me and think it's funny because I may knock you out in the name of the Lord. All right. <laughs> but I mean, when we get scared, it, it, you know, I don't like snakes too much. So if I said there was a big rattlesnake in a concession stand, all of a sudden your attitude is going to change, right? How many of you ever seen a snake out in the woods and then you can't walk in the work because you're just looking, you're watching every step. And before you were rolling, you see a big old water mark and you're like, oh, God, i got to get out of here. It's going to take forever. I'm watching every lead. And all of a sudden you become vigilant because it's the same way if I said there's a rattlesnake in a concession stand, all of a sudden, bam, I got your attention. So we have an adversary that's always looking for a, a, like the buzzard, is looking to get into your deer stand, and the deer stand represents you in my life. Now aren't you glad that when, now how many of you know that Satan, at, at some point in your life, if you've lived long enough, he's had a heyday in your life. Or do we have all perfect people here today? Can I get a good evening? <laughs> We've all let him in. Sometimes we just had the door wide open and said, come on in, this is my buddy. But as we grow and as we give our lives to Christ, we start making better choices. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And we don't want Him to have access into our lives. John chapter 10, 
verse 29. We'll run through some scriptures here. We're, we're almost done. John chapter 10. We're talking about keeping our guard up. John chapter 10, verse 29. I'm actually going to read verse 27 through 29. Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Isn't that a great promise? When you know Jesus is the Lord and Savior, you'll never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Isn't that awesome that Jesus says no one can snatch them away? Verse 29, For my Father has given them to me, and He is more powerful than anyone else. Listen to this. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. We always talk about how God has us in the palm of His hand. But no one can snatch us from His hand. But it is our job and responsibility as Christians to keep our guard up. Second Corinthians, 2 Chronicles. I'm just going to read this verse off the screen. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. I got it right here if I need it. But it was Jehoshaphat was facing a, a huge army. And he didn't. How many of you ever faced anything you didn't know what to do? I mean, every uh, we got a hundred percent good space in because we're all going to face things and we don't understand it. We may not know what to do. Sometimes it's okay not to know what to do because then you go to the Lord and say, "Lord, I can't handle this." And sometimes we're like, "Golly, why did I do that in the things long before this?" And so Jehoshaphat is facing this huge army. He has no idea what to do, and he says, "Oh, our God." Won't you stop them? How many of us like to pray sometimes? Lord, just take this away. We, we all do it. He says, won't you stop them? But this is the neat thing about Jehoshaphat. He was humble and he said, we are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. Now listen to this. We do not know what to do. We can all relate to that, right? Sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do, but he says, but... We are looking to you for what? Yeah. Man, there's a lot of power. There's a lot of sermons in one verse. He said, we're powerless. He admitted, hey, myself, I can't do this. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. Man, there's a lot of power in that verse. Amen? So we want to keep our guard up and keep our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. We don't have to read it or if it, if it pops up that's fine but it basically says don't let anger get a foothold in your life so satan is always wanting to get a foothold in my life in your life he knows our weaknesses and so therefore if we don't know what our weaknesses are we'll leave the door open but we're keeping our guard up can i get a good amen, amen. ephesians chapter 6 i know i'm going fast i'm going to throw this last verse at you ephesians chapter 6 Verse 10 and 11. We just used it last week about the armor of God, but we're going to take a little different approach. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. It says, The final word, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Now listen. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm. And this is my point. Against all what? Strategies of the devil. One translation says schemes. And so let me break it down to you. We're, we're done. we got to keep our guard up. We don't want buzzards getting in our deer stand. Amen? And the way that happens is there's a crack. Because we, we all, if, if you live long enough, every day there's some cracks there. And we got to be able to acknowledge when we got a crack in our, in our glass. And we got to get it closed and sealed back up. So we don't allow Satan to deceive us or, or, or cause us to, you know, get, get, get access in our life. Now, how about this? How many of y'all are thankful that just like I'm going to take that deer stand and use some bleach and clean that thing up, aren't you thankful that the Lord takes our life, our abode, our heart? When we come to Him, we're a mess. He doesn't use bleach. Just one drop of the blood of Jesus washes your whole heart clean. Can I give you an amen? It gives you a new start in life. So I challenge you as followers of Christ... Man, keep your guard up. Remember why you do what you do. You say, oh man, Pastor Chet, why do I have opposition? Well, think about it. When you're doing something good for the Lord, there's always going to be opposition that comes against us. It never fails. 
But that's okay because we've already read the back of the book. Amen? Yeah. Closing with this. Your call is what matters. Every one of us have a call in our life. Your call is different than mine. Mine is different than yours. But we each have a part to play through the body of Christ, through our church. Whatever God has got us to do. Because a hundred years from now, it won't matter a lot of things that we think matter today. What's going to matter is, did I do what God called me to do? Man, I know people that do so many ministries that are behind the scenes. Just talked to a guy this morning that's going to actually uh, do a service, a, a funeral for some friends. And they have some, some, some of them have no church background whatsoever. What better opportunity to take the love of Christ? That's a ministry. What I do is a ministry. What you do. We all have different things that we do well. Amen. Mine are easy to keep up with. Can I get a good amen? But you know what? Stay in your calling. Remember, you're fighting for your calling and your purpose. There's people that only you can reach and nobody else can. And we don't have to reach everybody. Thank God that God equips each one of us. So keep your guard up. Let's don't let the old buzzard in. Amen? Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. May we leave here and be doers of the word and keep our guard up and be sober and alert and vigilant. Just like there was a snake in that room, we'd be on our toes, literally. May we live that way daily. And Lord, serve you and keep our eyes open. And may we continue to lead. Follow you, Lord. May you lead and guide us. And Lord, I ask you to help us to keep our guard up. And may we always focus on our calling and our purpose. There's so much bigger picture than just what we get caught up in on a daily basis. It's about you and it's about eternity. It's about spreading this gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, heads bowed and eyes closed. If you never accepted Christ, this is the prayer I prayed in the old gravel parking lot at the Cowboy Church just like this. I said... Lord Jesus, I know that you died on the cross for my sin. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to have your way in my life. I give you the reins, Lord, of my life. Have your way from this day forward in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, guys, hey, we love y'all. I don't know about y'all, if you can tell or not, but I'm pumped about getting to do something in the arena. So this coming Saturday, we'll have our open school rain or shine. Please come out and see us. And uh, if not, we will see you guys Sunday. And uh, man, it's, it's a good looking crowd this morning, even on Memorial Day. And we had a good crowd in the parking lot too. Let's give the Lord a uh, good hand clap as we go. Man, I'm thankful that we're getting to get back together and spend some time together. We love y'all. We will see y'all Saturday or Sunday. We'll see you on the uh, Facebook Live for sure Wednesday night.